It has been said that you can tell who we are by the fences we build. Fences have woven themselves into our literature and our lives. It was Robert Frost who claimed that good fences make good neighbors. And he who admonished, don't ever take a fence down until you know why it was put up. We straddle the fence when we can't make up our minds. And we have back fence conversations. We covet the greener grass on the other side of the fence as well. Unless, of course, the grass needs mowing or the fence needs painting. It's hard not to recall the delicious mischievousness of Mark Twain's Tom Sawyer as he hoodwinked a good portion of the neighborhood boys one Saturday morning to paint for him 30 yards of fence nine feet high and pay him for the privilege. Tom Sawyer knew pretty much how not to paint a fence. Tom Robbins knows a lot about them. We're looking at a rail fence, a split rail fence here. Uh, this one specifically is often referred to as a worm or snake fence. Uh, I've also heard it referred to as a Virginia fence. Uh, worm or snake seems to make sense because when you look at it from the air, it does look like a wriggling snake or worm. The old saying for a good rail fence was it needed to be horse high, hog tight, and bull strong. There are some advantages with this fence. Uh, first of all, you didn't have to have any fence post. This also has the advantage of being portable. If you were moving your cornfield to a new site, you could simply dismantle the fence and move it to the new spot. It was said that a fence, a rail fence that would be eight to 12 rails high could take about 8,000 rails per mile. It may seem to be very wasteful in terms of the amount of wood needed, uh, but uh, you actually could save time in the long run by not having to put the post holes in. Here we have another type of rail fence that's a little different. You're still using split rails, but this one tends to have been used for more permanent applications like a small paddock or corral, maybe near a barn. This is sometimes referred to as a stake and rider type of rail fence. You have two stakes or posts, then the rails are stacked in between the posts. This is a traditional paling fence that you would often find around yards and gardens. One of the thoughts as to why this might be referred to as a paling fence is that traditionally they were brought to a point. This was done so that chickens could not fly up and roost on top of the fence and then continue a trip into the garden. You wanted to keep them out. It's hard to imagine why chickens don't just fly over the fence without a rest stop. But then again, chicken behavior is a whole different story. Today, something like $1.6 billion worth of fences is sold in the U.S. Some are laid back and unpretentious, blending easily into the landscape. Others shout, here I am, look at me. But the loveliest fences are like poetry. Their grace and rhythm speak to our deepest longings. Pleasant company to the passing seasons and our lives. As reflected in our Carolina fences. <laughs> <laughs>